Hey everyone, welcome back to Installation 00. This is the Classified Materials series where we cover every entry in the Halsey's Journal from start to finish, exploring the lore and tidbits of information surrounding each entry in turn. This is episode 17, dated October 15, 2521. Doctor, if you would. October 15th, 2521. Standardizing our operating systems over the last seven decades has left us vulnerable to the insurgency. Since the ubiquitous code is identical on every ship and base, any enemy can study it, and despite highly regulated security, hack it. A terrorist recently disabled a patrolling destroyer, the Persephone before a single shot was fired. Persephone's captain elected to abandon ship and overload the reactors before allowing her capture. <laughs> How ironic. In perfecting our software, we have rendered it ineffectual. The outer colonies employ homegrown collections of software. Our success in penetrating their idiosyncratic systems is patchy at best. Time to think outside the box, or in this case, outside 70 years of dogmatic programming practices. Our third generation AIs are now operational. I've spared no resource to develop routines based on existing translation algorithms that enable this new crop of intellect to penetrate any system software. A serendipitous side effect, the AIs have learned to mutate and defend established UNSC OSS from attack. Illegal Entry Protocols, IEP, and Counter Illegal Entry Protocols, CIEP, are now commonly called PI and CPI. Vocalizations of misspelled acronyms. Good grief. Custard Pie from Havadis. This entry focuses more exclusively on systems and data processing, and speaks to a common issue that we see in our modern day technological civilization, drawn out to the nth degree, effectively where a single government and thus single civilization has emerged, rather than the plethora of different civilizations that currently occupy Earth and it comes in the form of program standardization, basically meaning that nearly the entirety of the programming and operating systems used by the UNSC specifically for the inner colonies now basically all operate on exactly the same system. And in some regards, that's a good optimization to make from a programming standpoint. If you have a single system that is efficiently serving billions of individuals, troubleshooting, problem solving, and errors are very easy to fix taking the huge degree of variability that is inherent in different programming systems and architectures and linearizing them basically means that the only differing functional components from one user to the other is solely hardware-based, massively truncating the otherwise huge list of potential problems that could be presenting for any administrator to be able to effectively fix. But it does have its downsides for both the end user and the overarching administration. In this particular case, it'll be the UNSC, and likely, above that, the Office of Naval Intelligence. For the end user, it means very little privacy. If your quote-unquote administrator is so inclined, they can very easily access the information that you are processing on a day-to-day -day basis. That means very little can be hidden. However, on the flip side, for the administrators, or the UNSC and ONI in this situation, it means that it's equally easy to hack these systems. If it's a single system that covers almost the entirety of the inner colonies, one single loophole, one single hack, one single backdoor entry into the system remains in situ for the entirety of the system, allowing it to be hacked from numerous locations simultaneously. Now yes, it does mean that then a simple patch plugs that hole and prevents that particular hack from being exploited, but it won't be long at all until a new exploitation is located and the hackers can once again gain access to the system almost unencumbered. 
and since it's the same structural architecture from system to system to system, it really doesn't require that much of a learning curve in order to understand how to navigate it, and ultimately find the information that you're looking for, for whatever exploit it is that you plan on using it. A dramatic nth degree situation is highlighted in this very entry where a terrorist managed to hack and disable a UNSC destroyer. A destroyer, needless to say, is an extraordinarily heavily armoured UNSC warship that sports a Mac battery, high velocity coil guns, archer missiles, point defence guns and is nuclear capable, carrying three Shiva class nuclear warheads. You can surely imagine what kind of devastation could be unleashed if a hacker nowadays was able to access the operating systems of, say, a US Navy destroyer, locking the crew out and taking executive control of the destroyer's functions. And although no one was actually hurt in this particular example in the Halo universe, it does highlight, however, the cost of such a mistake in standardizing the programming systems in such a way and that is that the captain ordered that everyone abandon ship and then overload the reactors, destroying the ship entirely rather than allowing it to be captured by the would-be terrorist. In either case, although there was no loss of human life, we're still talking about hundreds of millions of credits worth of military hardware being written off simply due to an exploitable hack into the operating system. It also goes on to highlight just how difficult it is for the UNSC and the Office of Naval Intelligence to access systems in the outer colonies in order to identify rebels and insurrectionists and other plans that may be in defiance of the colonial military authority. Nearly every single system and every single planet has an entirely different programming architecture, meaning what might work to access a system on one colony or one continent of that colony might not work on another, significantly muddying the water for the intelligence operatives who are attempting to find information that is actionable in operations against the insurrectionists. And when you add in that human lives are very much on the line in these kinds of situations, the stakes become much higher. However, Halsey does go on to pitch just such a circumstance where her new third generation AIs may be able to help this exact issue. It's absolutely no secret that Dr. Catherine Halsey is the consummate expert on artificial intelligence. Having worked extensively with smart AIs over the entirety of her career, as well as overseeing the construction of almost all of their programming, specifically for the third generation onwards. These third generation AIs, which includes Kalmia, Cortana's older sister, and Cortana herself, have some of the most advanced algorithms built into their Riemann matrix in existence, allowing them to crack into practically any system in existence. And as a direct side effect of this exact capability, these AIs are also capable of plugging systems that they are tasked with defending against exploits, meaning that despite the standardization of UNSC data systems, these third generation AIs secure these otherwise weakened systems by intuitively developing workarounds and plugs for these exploits using their immense intellect. We thus far have 2nd, 3rd, 4th and 5th generation AIs in active service with the UNSC, with at least some passing suggestion of a 6th generation of AIs that are actually AIs designed by AIs. Time will tell if this particular rumour has any substance, but with the immense intellect of AIs actually on the task of developing new AIs, it would be fascinating to see what these sixth generation AIs would be capable of. Mom? That will be all, George. Thanks for watching. If I could respectfully ask, if you enjoyed this video, consider hitting the subscribe button and the little bell icon so you're told the second a new video hits the shelves. Hit this video with a like if you enjoyed, and if not, it's not a problem. And be sure to pop a comment below to throw me an idea on what you want to see next. Massive thanks to my awesome patrons, Spartan10148, the Metarch of my facility, Falcon, Prophet, Leon, Sylphia, Mikhail, and Irrefutable, the monitors of the array, Darian, Flaming Halo, Cameron, Spartan0137, the Cave Potato, Andrew, Shia, Dakota, and Ghost, my diligent sub-monitors, my fleet of Strato Sentinels, and my loyal enforcers, and all other patrons who have supported the channel and helped keep the domain operational. 
Huge props and recognition to Todd Morrison, Spartan137, Wesley Stuckey, and Jacob Kemp for jumping on as Tier 0 Transcendent YouTube members. You guys are epic. Shout out to John for reasons. And if you want to help support the channel and score yourself tons of perks and merch, head over to Patreon or consider becoming a YouTube member. Links, as ever, are in the description. Much love, take it easy everyone, and find peace in the domain. <laughs>